All right. Can you see me? This works way better on the uh, YouTube. Test, test, test. So we're testing the live stream. Works a lot better going directly into YouTube than through the OBS software. Anyway, uh, probably wait to see if we can get some more people on. How to fish a new river. Monitor here, monitor here, holding the wall in the background. What you see is what you get. I mean, I had to like brush my teeth and everything. <laughs> oh, anyone else on? One person on. I guess the email just went out. Uh, so <clears throat> probably give a few more minutes for people to come on. I was going to go fishing this morning, but then I realized I got an order of floats I got to work on. And I got about three more reels to get turned out. And uh, But I went out a couple of days ago, tried to get a film some videos about how to approach fishing a new river. It totally got rained out, like probably the video you saw yesterday. So I figured, why not just turn that into a live stream? Yes, I'm talking to my air conditioner. <laughs> um, so um, if you guys have any suggestions on how you guys approach a new river, just put it in the chat and then we can chat over it and we can talk about it. I mean, you know, like I say, when I started fishing the Black Warrior River seriously in 2008, 2007, 2008, um, I wasn't having any luck. And one of the problems was there's not a lot of good bank fishing on the Black Warrior River because they're generally a lot of steep um, uh, sides and stuff, kind of like the it's really the foothills of the Appalachian mountain chain. So um, you don't have a lot of uh, it's not a lot of good access. So I figured I was going to have to have a boat and I decided to build a boat. And that was my little P row. And I don't I don't know how to make it show up here on the screen uh so i built that little p-row uh over the course of a winter and get, bought a good paddle that wouldn't uh, bought a wooden kayak paddle for it and just got out and started fishing at least i could get off the bank you know start fishing and i, and I, I just i wouldn't i just wasn't having any luck you know and one day i went up to uh what they call deerlit creek which i made go up that kind of like I did the Blue Creek video one day and there was so much current that day and there was so much wind there were a lot of waves because it was a Saturday and a lot of boat traffic going downstream to the tailgate party you know in the Alabama football games they have like a tailgate on the river it's like and so it was a and I, I was taking on water out there and so I kind of got closer to the bank and I kind of got tired of fighting current and so I just took the rod and cast out toward the bank. And um, I don't know, it must have been, I don't know, it's probably 70, you know, 50 feet maybe. And I was just too lazy to reel it back in. I just started drifting. I caught a fish. It was the same pattern off the rig that I used now. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you know. And so, and I cast out again, picked up another fish, you know. And then eventually I got up to the shore in the bank that was a little lake, a little um, sort of an undercut bank where the, the wind was not as fierce and the waves and the current was not as bad, a little sort of dead spot, you know, and caught a few fish. But I saw, but after I had caught two or three fish in that one area, I, I realized that the fishing just sort of stopped. And one of the things I've learned that crappie fishermen talk about is how they're just trying to catch the two or three most aggressive fish in each school. Then they're going to go find a new school of fish or a new brush pile or a new whatever. And that's something I've found to be generally true for, for catfish because, um, um, I mean, brim and catfish, I don't, you know, I just go with the jugs on catfish. And so that's how I first began to put things together on the Black Warrior River. Now, the way I think about the Black Warrior River, to me, it's two separate rivers, but really more like four. But 
in downtown Tuscaloosa, right where the right almost right where the um where the old bridge the old the, the bridge the fellow who built the bridge back in before the civil war the, the old bridge foundations are still there but right along in there the river changes south of downtown tuscaloosa the river is sandy it's a sandy bottom it's a totally different river it's like the alabama river rivers like that i grew up fishing on but north of the river, it's like all rocky because you, there's really just pure bedrock that comes out of the river bottom. And that's where they kind of say, OK, this is where the Appalachian mountain chains start. And then you begin to see in really, but south of town are the floodplains in the swampy area. North and northeast of town is just really hilly and because you're moving toward uh, the, the Appalachians, um, you know, moving especially toward Birmingham and moving on up toward Fort Payne as you get on up toward Chattanooga and all the way up the Appalachians, all the way up to New England and whatever. And the actual, the Appalachian mountain chains, as I understand, they go all the way up to like uh, Norway or something. It actually follows up through the ocean. People don't realize that, but it does. Um, and so I found that when fishing a new river, I um, fish primarily two methods either you can go find the fish or you can call the fish to you i generally find that drifting and trolling are the best way to find the fish and then um and then um what i'm trying to think here um and then just anchoring and chumming up an area is a great way to call fish to you and so once you sort of figure it out um you can then anchor in spots that are known to produce fish and then call those fish to you with the chum and then that those fish will they'll continue to bring in fish over the course of time uh, over the course of a day uh generally i prefer to fish during the proper times to fish like today is a great day to fish because we're moving into the new moon which will be here on the 7th of december and all morning from basically sunrise till about um I forget what is it about 10 30 today even through the transit period is going to be good but the middle of the day is going to be dead but it'll pick up again about 3 30. I may go out then if I get all my work done here and so um uh fishing a new river is um the the main thing See, the thing about the rivers down here is they're all dammed up. So they're sometimes they act like rivers and sometimes they act like lakes. And that's one of the more difficult things. Um, when it acts like a lake, it, the fishing's not so good because there's no current. But when there's current, there's really good fishing. And the current either happens by them. The current basically happens by them releasing water from the dam. And that's, you know, so it's uh, and so and the dam schedules are not as predictable here because i know one the where i fish often the turf one of the turbines is down so they're not generating electricity and oftentimes the barge traffic is really dictating the river because they suck water out release water suck water out in the lot and release water so the river is always up and down and moving back and forth so there's not a real set there's always there's always some current but this time of the year they often only have a couple of gates open and if they have a couple of gates open um it's very shallow at the dam i mean you can just about stand up i wouldn't try it it's probably it's probably about six feet deep right below the dam and it stayed and it even gets shallower than that. there's some spots there that are three feet deep some spots you can see big rocks coming out of it where a lot of cormorants roost and those cormorants poop a lot and i'll end up casting into there and catch a lot of fish kind of like a cormorant roost like they do in texas but it's just on rocks but then one there's a it's a natural shoal and then that natural shoal drops off it goes from about three to six feet deep down to about 20 feet deep just it just instantly drops off like on a cliff and um and i generally find that um well you know i fish without sonar i'm just rambling today any guys want to comment Hey, good morning, Bass Finder 68. <laughs> good morning. Yes. I was incredibly depressed this morning when I woke up. It happens sometimes. My vitamin D gets low. I have to take vitamin D supplements. 
Because my body, as much time as I spend outdoors fishing, my body still doesn't generate vitamin D worth. So I have to take that. So I got to go get my medicine. But anyway, um, good morning. Good morning to everybody. Where's my manners? I Kind of like Darth Vader, just dispense with the pleasantries. You know? It's like, it's like, you just start here. You know? <laughs> anyway, so I forgot what I was talking about now. What was I talking about? Hey, Eddie, Eddie Stocks. See, I got two monitors. There's a monitor here and a monitor here. I always have two monitors because you have to when you're editing video. So good morning. Eddie's in the house. Eddie's and Eddie's in the house and Bass is in the house. So you guys want to talk, we can chat and stuff. If you guys got questions, just chat. Just put it in the chat box and I'll look at it and stuff. So when I get tired of rambling. So um, and so uh, I did have a sonar. Uh, before and someone is that one of you guys have sent me a sonar. I still haven't hooked it up or anything uh, So that helped me to learn what the bottom structure was But what really helped me to learn the bottom structure was the hand line literally having a line with a big concrete um, oh, um, a Concrete weight on it about the size of this lens here. So, you know, and um and just literally dragging that weight on the bottom, well, obviously with a hook up top so we could catch something if, just in case. But literally pass, after, just dozens of pass after pass after pass, literally feeling what's going on because you can feel the rock, the lead or whatever it is dragging along the bottom and you can see that you can feel the depth. You, there's, there's little humps that come up, although I can't visually tell you what it looks like because I don't. Again, I don't have the sonar. I know about, oh, there's that little hump that comes off when I'm just about right around here. I, it was kind of like Eskimo fishing, you know? They, they just know where things are. Like, hey, this is the boat place. They where this, you know, 500 years ago, there was this, these, these English settlers or whatever came over and they were too stupid to survive the winter. So they died in this boat and their boat sank. And so everybody, all these hundreds of years, everybody knows exactly where the boat sank. And with nothing being written down. So that's kind of how I learn things. And I think that's something that's been lost with a lot of technology. People rely on the technology as opposed to relying on the body of knowledge of the community, which is in a lot of ways just as accurate. Um, so um, see, uh, I took my son to the park. When we got home, we found his goldfish died. Dude, <laughs> we go over. What? Dude, look it up. Which is hard situation for my for my first time for well, first time, any first time. How do you explain autoerotic asphyxiation to a four-year-old? Right, well, you gotta see that look, man. <laughs> you know, they, got, you, you, <laughs> they gotta learn stuff dies in this world, man. This world is broken, man. Stuff dies all the time. You do everything right, stuff still goes wrong. It's just you know, it, it's good that they learned that that early because, because <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, I don't know the science. I mean, I know asphy asphyxiation, you're just basically choking, but it's a good way to tell the, to tell the fish. You, you just got to explain, you know, it's a good way to introduce them to chemistry. It's like, hey, look, water is H2O. It's a, it's a chemical. Fish need water like we need air. And you... And, and the thing is, is if there's not enough air in the water for them to breathe or to filter or however their gills work, I've never really understood how fish gills work, um, then they're just going to die. But, hey, man, take the goldfish and use it for bait, man. Just Hey man, keep it uh, family friendly, man. It's a family friendly channel, dude. <laughs> it's like, you ever notice I don't ever cuss and stuff? It's family friendly, so none of that bad stuff. Oh, yeah, we got a troll. We may have to kick him. What do you guys think? I'll kick him if you want. I have no problem kicking people. It's like, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Brian. Brian, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, let's see. So it's family friendly. Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying to do this, see how this works. Remove. Yes. I mean, you don't want to keep it family friendly, you get kicked. I mean, just either act grown up or leave. <laughs> you know? So I wanted to do these live chats sometimes when I'm here. And because uh, it's just something I want to do. Sometimes it's just easier to talk shop. Sometimes I don't want to have to. Just pulling out the camera and all that, that's a lot of work and stuff. But sometimes fishermen are good at just talking shop. I get. Yeah, it is sad. People want to stir things up, and um, you know, it's just like people are well, people are falling and broken. This is a fact of life, you know. They're just anyway. Um, now what was I talking about? I was talking about the river. Um, you guys got any questions about fishing, or I mean, what are you guys doing? What are you guys thinking about? I'm trying to think about how I'm going to approach fishing in 2019. Yeah. And I'm thinking I want to, I want to try to do more anchoring and fishing and stuff than drifting. I like drifting and I always do it, but you know, sometimes you get, you don't, you don't, you always want to push yourself, right? You always want to learn new. You always want to try new things or, or get back to some old things that you've done years ago and just haven't done in recent years or whatever. Uh, wait a minute. What? Okay. Confusing. Oh, that's a comment from a different video. Yeah. Okay, that's a different system. Um, so I'm, I definitely want to do more. Um, I'm thinking about uh, getting back to some... Um, back to some uh, anchor jugs when I get back into jugging and stuff. And I, I've, I realized for me, I, I always have the greatest success when I have about 30 jugs out. When I have fewer than 30 jugs, I just don't catch as many fish. I don't cover as much water. But golly, 30 jugs, one person, 30 jugs in a little John boat is a lot of work. And it's just like, oh man, you just see it, you know. I generally find that for every 15 jugs I put out, I usually catch about one fish. And then you reset the jugs, you'll catch something else and things like that. But I'm seriously thinking about just switching to to um, anchor jugs for one reason. I don't want to lose jugs. So we've gone from how to fish a river to talking about jugs again. <laughs> I'm probably just going to be rambling, man, just talking shop and seeing what you guys have to say. Have you ever tested... One of those uh, drift net things or drift bags. I was thinking about. Oh yeah, dude, get one. Yes, I. Uh, um, those are like the best thing going. Kai, I I was introduced to that when I built my P row back in 2008 or 2010. Yeah, 2007 or whatever. And I bought a couple from Academy. Um, um, I just got the ones from Academy, and um, and and they work. I mean, they really work. I have. Used it with my John boat before, but it uh, eventually just kind of dry rotted because I've you know, had it like 10 years and never just left it on the boat. And, you know, just never really took care of it or anything. But um, even in anchoring, if you anchor off the bow, instead you anchor off the bow, you put a drift sock in the back. The boat won't hardly move side to side much, hardly at all. Now, the one advantage I have is because I have that long uh um, tail off in the water for my long tail that slows the boat down some it'll often uh, keep the boat straight acts like a big long rudder and if I'm anchored I'll put it down and I won't hardly drift side to side much in the wind or current or anything it takes a lot so but those work really well I mean it's just um, I've heard of guys who take five gallon buckets and drill holes in them do the same thing people who take pants uh you know, they'll take uh, old pants. These are my long johns here, but they'll take old pant legs and stuff and do the same thing, you know. Um, but, yeah, get you a couple 
And if you go to Academy or, or Bass Pro and so, or whatever, you can um, – they'll have the size boat, um, like the, 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 the appropriate size sock for the size boat you have, you know. And it, that's important to get that as well. And there's different materials, and and I don't I don't know so much about all that. Uh, you could very easily make them yourself if you just got a sewing machine and went to um, Joann's or hand cooked fabrics or something. And wait a minute, I'm gonna go get some. I need to get some water. Sorry, you talk a lot. You got to take care of the old vocal folds. Is your book still available online? Uh, which book? Are you talking about the Cat Fisherman's Prayer Book? Um, are you talking about the, um, the Handliner's Handbook? Um, the Cat Fisherman Prayer Book is on Amazon, so it's up. The Handliner's Handbook is on Teachable. If you just, um, what's the thing? It's Teachable, teachable.com, and you type in Black Warrior Lewis, you'll see that. Um, it should still be on Amazon. I can look that up real quick. <clears throat> um, give me a second. <clears throat> Amazon, Amazon.com. I don't think they'll let me put links in the on the chat. Sorry, I'm looking at the other monitor. I don't think so, but let's see. Cat Fisherman's prayer book. Yep, it's on Amazon. Yeah, Cat Fisherman's Prayer Book. Just type that in. You'll see it. Um, gosh, that was February 2017. So that's almost two years old now. My goodness, hard to believe it's been that long. And then the Teachable. Let's see if I can find the Teachable stuff. Teachable.com. Well, I, I know what it is. Black or Allures. Dot Teachable. Com. Yeah, that's the where I have the Black or Lewis Boot Camp or whatever. I'm thinking about taking a lot of that stuff and just selling it directly onto the website because, I mean, why not, right? I mean, that way I don't have to I mean, just, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, check Amazon and Teachable when I have various books. And I, want, I really actually want to get some more things like that done. Okay, that's from yeah. You know, see what else do we have? Good to see you. Sad people start yeah. Uh, Eddie, we used to pull behind bank head down out in the middle of the river, about four hundred feet back, and cast liver on the bottom. Catch cat until you had all you want. Yeah, it works. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about below bank head. Yeah, because. About 400 feet back there is um, it. You're down below that. You're down below that uh, drop off, and there's a couple of little humps. But yeah, there's fish all around in there. It's kind. That's kind of like where the. That's kind of down where the. Um, out in the middle of the channel, more where the. Um, uh, it's kind of where the lock is, right? Um, where they well, especially. And I catch a lot of bluegill off that lock. I just don't like hanging out around that lock too long. But, yeah. In fact, I always put my jugs right there where you're talking about, about 400 feet below Bankhead, and just let them start drifting down. And then I'll pick them all up and make another run like that. Um, I've just never been good at riding real fishing for catfish, which is something I need to work on just as a fisherman, you know. But, yeah, I mean, it works. You know, it, it, you, yeah, you, you, can, you can feed yourself – there. I mean, that's why that's where all the cat fishermen go it, around this area. You know, they go below Bankhead because that's one, that's where the state record is. And two, 
that place generates lots of catfish, you know. And you don't have to work all that hard to find them. And there's some big ones in there. And they're fun to catch. And a lot of blues. I've caught the channels, but the channel catfish don't get big down here. It's like a genetic thing or something. I don't know. Um, i tell you another place uh, right where I put in, Blue Creek, where those guys will fish. They'll get, guys will come in, camp off the bank right there at that point. There's a point. And those guys are cast and just they'll be catching these 30, 35 pound uh, um, flatheads. And, and there's some guys get right up below the dam, right into the really fast current, which is weird. And they'll be catching flatheads up there. They, you know, they'll catch flatheads too. I had one guy, <laughs> I was I was just doing my normal drifting thing. And there was a crappie fisherman off on the other side of that little break wall or whatever that you see. A lot of crappie fishermen fish that, and there's some good crappie fishing there. And he he was out in the middle of the current, same place, and caught like a 30 pound um, flathead just trolling crappie jigs on like six pound line. <laughs> so it took him 25 minutes, but he gave it to me, and I ate that. You know, flathead have pretty. They seem to have the whitest meat, but they have a lot of that red meat you have to cut out too. So, uh, but anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take off when the horn blows. Yeah. <laughs> they are very good about that. They really do watch out and see if there's other boaters down there. I've heard horror stories of other places where they're just sort of negligent, you know, and they just release the water and don't care. But, yeah, when the horn blows, I just I drop everything, man. I crank and I just go. Yeah. Um, it's still kind of it's still kind of scary, though. <laughs> it's just, you know, you're just like. I mean, he's going to err on the side of not staying very close. Um, but anyway, uh, what am I drinking? Water, H2O, for my voice. I don't like to talk. You, a lot of you don't realize that I don't like talking. I'm a very quiet, reserved person. I'm really aloof. I, I you know, I really don't talk much. And when I do talk a lot, my throat hurts very easily. So you drink water to uh, lubricate the vocal folds down in here so you won't go hoarse so quickly. Um, water is pretty much all I drink. Well, I like coffee. I have basil out in the herb garden. A lot of time I like to make basil tea in the wintertime after the basil's gotten all hard on the leaf. But anyway, um, uh, but anyway, fishing a new river, um, you know, the, probably the best resources is just people who fish the river before you talk to other boaters. Um, you know, you, you know, you, you because fishermen generally they like talking shop and you're not necessarily asking people for their spots or whatever. But when you get out on the river as well, just watch what other fishermen are doing. Just watch them. You know, where are they fishing? Why are they fishing there? And when you're fishing a spot, when you leave, you'll find other fishermen will come look where you're fishing on their sonar because they're trying to figure things out as well. But just watch other fishermen and see what they do. That's one of the ways I learned how to jug fish on the river because I was doing a lot of anchor jug fishing and not having much luck. And then one day when I was uh, bluegill fishing, I saw a jug fisherman out there below Bankhead, that same sort of 400-foot area. He had about 50 jugs out very short jugs um they were your typical jugs that kind of look like this you know your what do you call those noodle jugs this is my one of, this is my tackle box floats and um and he had like 50 of them out you know maybe 45 and he would just all out there he'd go we have a fish he'd go get it rebate it and then scoot on back to the bank and, and just sit there and wait and i said huh so they're not anchoring them they're drifting them and so that's how i started drifting my jugs and i started catching more fish but i typically fish fish a little bit longer line i, I typically fish 12 feet of line not nine to 12 feet of line on my drifting jugs instead of just three or four feet like a lot of people do uh because i want to make sure that the as the wind and current can help 
keep the line down, you put some weight on it, keep it down. I seem to do better with a little bit better, um, a little bit better line, a little bit longer line on it. And uh, but like I say, golly, you know, it, it'd be cool uh, to mix it up some at least. If I had thirty jugs, maybe you know, maybe anchor fifteen and drift fifteen. That way, you're only having to do half as much work in terms of. Because the wind doesn't blow straight down the river, it, and oftentimes, depending on the current, the wind, the waves, the the jugs just wash up right against the bank, and they're not doing any good. So, I, you know, and, and I've had times where I've literally put my jugs in the middle of the river, thinking it'll be safe, <laughs> and they all literally all every single one of them gets washed up against the bank. You got to go back, and you know. I can't tell you how much gas I burn. I burn way more gas fishing with jugs than I do fishing rod and reel. Because rod and reel, I get to a spot and I'm just drifting. And then I don't crank up till it's time to pull another drift. And depending on the time of the year, some of those drifts would be like long drifts because I generally fish from the dam all the way down to about a mile or two below the dam. And it takes a good time to drift that uh, drift. But, but if I put 30 jugs out, you'll put 30 jugs out. I'll literally, by the time I get jug 30 out, it's time to start running the jugs at jug number one. And and by the time you run those jugs again, it's time and rebate them, it's time to run them again. And so you're just constantly running that motor. It's hard on the motor, my little motor, because you know it's a little, you know, power generator motor with that's all been hopped up and trying to blow itself apart. <laughs> about, about 50, yeah, Ben, yeah. Ben Wicker says he puts in about 50 jugs. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. I've seen a lot of, yeah, that, that you know, that seems to be like the number, you know. And what I like, a lot of guys where we are, they make a family outing out of it. They'll go camping. I know some people, I don't know them personally, but I've seen them. They'll set up a camp, they have generators, and it's like a family, it's like a fishing expedition, just like the Eskimos or something. You know how Eskimo families go, they'll go, on a family hunt for elk and stuff or whatever they are, um, what do they call those things? Reindeer, caribou, or seal hunting. Same thing. They'll just literally get up, put up a tent, set up a base camp, and you get, you, you'll have, you know, dad, brother, and uncle are out running the jugs, and mom and daughter are catching brim at the bank, cutting up bait, bait and stuff, and, 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 and re repairing jug lines and, and, and you know, it's a you know it's a it's a great family thing. Uh, you can feed your family, and you can get the whole family involved. And you can pass a whole body of knowledge out. And and you know I thought about getting some some people from church and thinking, man, we ought to just do a big jug fishing weekend or something. That would be fun. But I haven't done that yet. I gotta I gotta finish building this stinking boat. It's been like a year since I started this thing. <laughs> it's like embarrassing how long it's taken me. Uh, Bass Finder sixty eight says, "Where do I get jugs?" Um, I make them. Let me show you. I'll be right. I'll be right back. Yeah, so I make my jugs. Um, um, you see these swimming pool noodles? These are the easiest ones to make. Just type in jugs or jug noodle on YouTube. You'll probably see one of my videos. These are the first ones I made. But then all my other jugs are out on the truck. But then I started making them like this with the with the dowel. And this, I'll, I'll bore a hole through the middle here and put this down through the middle. You know, or whatever. And uh, the line goes here, and uh, and that works pretty well. I, I have not had a fish take those under yet. A simple jugs. If you have any kind of bamboo in your area, bamboo is hollow on the inside. 
So go get some thick bamboo. Drill here on the bottom. Put you some uh, an eyelet here, and you just use. Uh, I don't have any fishing line. Well, well, well. well here's uh, this is thirty pound line. I probably well, most guys like to use braid. I rather use mono. I just I just like mono filament. And uh, I'm thinking about offering a jug fishing line kit on my website because you know I have the uh, Catman hooks that I sell plus the swivels and things like that. You don't have to spend a lot of money in jugs. I mean, these if you've got any kind of bamboo like this even, it's hollow on the inside. It'll be hard to see on the water. So if you could take something like this and put it, you know, you could let's see. Even if you, um, oh, come on now. You can, you can even do something like that, you know. That'll help it or, or like that even, you know. You put enough weight here to make it sit up upright if you wanted. Make it act like a bobber if you wanted. Um, there's, you're not limited to any design. Just type in jug fishing. The best, don't buy jugs, man. I mean, it, you just can't buy them. They're too expensive to buy. And there's plenty of materials to make them. And you just sit down and make you make a dozen and fish those and then make another dozen and then make another dozen. You know, you don't have to make them all at one time. But uh, noodle jugs in this area are the most popular jug. But I've taken the noodle jug and I added the plank to it. Like this plank. Because, you know, fish can take these noodle jugs under very easily. Whereas these planks, they just, they can't. And I find I get better hook sets with the plank on it. Um, so that's just the way I approach jugs. You, know, As far as line for the jugs, uh, mo a lot of guys like to use just good old, whatever they use for trot line, they'll use for jug line. Now you got to look at your state regs. If you don't know what your state regs are, you got to, um, yeah, you got to look at the state regs. Uh, in Alabama, we're good. Jug fishermen are incredibly responsible down here. We don't we don't trash the place up. We get all our jugs out. We hate it when we lose jugs. And uh, I've even I've even lost a jug and had a fisherman knew it was my jug because he's seen me fish and he kept the jug until he saw me and gave it back to me while I was on the river one day. You know that that kind of thing. Uh, we don't have people robbing trot lines down here. All that you know. They gonna catfish these man. It's just wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm back and forth, like working jugs. Yeah. Yeah, don't have time for rod. I, I know. I mean, when you're really jug fishing the right way, there's, you don't have time for rod and reel fishing. Um, you just don't. You, you, you're already catching fish. You, you're. I mean, I have had times where I got seven jugs out and already had to start running the jugs because you're already catching fish. I mean, it works and you don't have to get all elaborate with the bait if you don't want you can just go chicken livers i prefer chicken gizzards because they're just harder but anyway it doesn't really matter you just you can get cheap baits out the grocery store you you, you run your jugs uh, so check your state regulations on the jugs use whatever materials you have available easy access to and then you can improve the design over time um, i'm probably going to anchor probably half my jugs and then probably free float half something like that over the course of the well, next year and because we'll have the longer boat hopefully if i get off my butt and get out here and fix the finish the boat we'll be able to haul like 30 jugs because there's no way i'm going to haul um 30 big planks like this in my little 12 foot john boat right now so when we get 16 foot man, it's easy a <clears throat> lot lot more a lot more room and space. Uh, when I have, see, someone else, someone I've written in large rivers. Yeah. Large rivers. When I've gone to new large rivers, I've always tried to get an idea of everything. Yeah, Google Earth. Yeah, Google Earth is a great thing. I mean, just satellite footage of what the water looks like. And also, too, you can get on the Navionics website. What's the Navionics website? They have all the uh, 
the charts are available for free online. You can just look at them, even if you don't have sonar. And I've done that myself. And you can see that um, what the structure of the river or lake is where you are. Right. I've done that a lot of times because the part of the river I fish is fairly uniform and flat. It's just bedrock, you know. And then you get below the first dam and it drops another 20 feet and then further down it drops another. I mean, it can get pretty deep down toward the toward Holt Dam. It gets very deep, but I don't ever fish down there. I just rather fish up toward the dam about a mile or two. Yeah, two liter bottles work well. That's, you know, two, two liter bottle will work just as well as the planks that I'm talking about, you know two liter coke bottles and let me see let me check um uh, if you go to us plastic they sell empty bottles like they're new bottles but just type in us plastic.com singular us plastic.com bottles and you can get all kinds of bottle shapes, exactly what you're talking about. Those two liter bottles, you can get the ones with the handle on them. You can, um, you know. And those work well. The, the two liter bottles are probably two liter bottles, Clorox bottle type bottles. Those are, again, very highly resistant. The fish will hardly be able to take those under if they can if they can it's a large fish and you don't want to you want to let them go anyway my throat's getting a little raw fellas i'm gonna have to wrap it on up here in a little bit i want to try to do this once a week you know maybe just just hang out and talk shop because that's half of what fishing's about just talking shop you learn stuff from just listening yeah so yeah u.s plastic i'm looking at the jugs so if you're asking literally where do you get jugs from, I sometimes I don't necessarily know what people mean when they say things. So you got like old radiator, not radiator, old uh, antifreeze type jugs that can work. Just make sure that there's no oil or antifreeze in these things, right? I've seen people use Coke bottles, but I mean, if you really want to, you can go to U.S. Plastics and buy some jugs from them, some big jugs from them. Uh, especially if you're in a state where the jugs have to be a certain color, you can actually buy the jugs in the color you want from them. And the cap sold separately. Like I'm looking here, here's a 32 ounce, <clears throat> oh, wait a minute, 64 ounce. Yeah, here's a 64 ounce white F type jug, which is like the. Um, like the radiator, like the coolant um, antifreeze type jug, cap sold separately. You know they're gonna nickel and dime you. A hundred, I mean, a dollar forty-seven each jug. That's what I'm looking here, and the caps are six cents each. And you can get some silicone and waterproof the cap closed if you want. Because that, the thing, the cool thing about the radiator jug or something like that, radiator jug, you know. Um, antifreeze jug is it has the handle and you can actually tie the handle and it makes it sort of uh, simpler that way um let's see let's see if we can find a different jug here I'm trying to find um yeah yeah here is a hard handleware two liter natural jug if it chooses to load I'm having to stream and okay. Um, wow, this one's cheaper. Two liter jug, a dollar five cents each. Caps sold separately, and the caps are uh, six cents each. You know, so you, you, if you wanted to buy, if you bought forty eight jugs, okay, you would save five percent if you bought forty eight or more jugs. So remember how we were saying fifty jugs. So if you bought 50 jugs at a dollar five cents each, you're talking 50 bucks. Yeah, that's not too bad. You know, that's really not too bad. And but 
because they're all jugs, they're literally jugs, they'll stack one, will they'll stack neatly in the boat, things like that. They won't be all oblong. And um, that could work. I mean, you could do it that way. Um, that would be a good way to go. So check out usplastic.com if you're wanting to buy jugs, and especially if you're wanting to buy like 50 jugs or 100 jugs, something like that, and you're not really wanting to go the swimming pool noodle route. I don't, you know, and so... That's how that can work. Yeah, uh, let's see. Ben says, love the live feed. I'm at work. So a little hard right now. Keep okay, good. Yeah, I will. Thanks. Roll tide. Yeah. I don't know, man. I hope Tua gets healed up in time. Um well, Jalen pulled it out at the end, man. It's like, yeah, Jalen, he just like showed up, you know. <laughs> that was funny. Um, yeah, I've seen people who do that. They'll take some spray paint or whatever kind of paint, and they will literally spray paint the inside of their jug, like a Pepsi bottle or whatever jug. If it's a clear jug, you can take some spray paint or any kind of paint, like say bright orange and put it in there, put the paint in and then shake it up, seal it up, shake it up. And now the jug is, is whatever color you want it to be. Right. So let's say and you're in an area where it has to be white jugs only. Well, if you put the paint inside the jug, the inside of the jug will always, the jug will always be white. And you don't have to worry about repainting it or anything. That's a pretty good tip. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. But anyway, all right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to do these live feeds once a week. I'm not sure exactly when. <laughs> I, I, It's hard for me to get on a schedule. You may do it Tuesdays, but um, I don't know. What day work for you guys? Just, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it's kind of fun because it's just fun to talk shop. Anyway, my throat's getting raw, and um, and I need to um, oh, I got to get to work on some of these orders, <laughs> a couple of orders. So it's been fun, fellas. I will see y'all next time. Yeah, I think it's cool for the channel, too. I think it'll be fun just to chill out and chat. See ya. I have no idea how to stop this. Like, oh, end stream. That's it. End.